All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I just couldn't resist. I've always wanted to say that. And I never get a chance during the story, so... Uh, how you all doing? I hope you're okay. Having a nice weekend. Here it is. Well, here's the first part of my long-awaited Q&A video. This is officially to celebrate 15,000 subscribers, but it's kind of moved on a bit since then, so there's 18,000 of you lovely people out there now who've taken the time to subscribe to my channel, and I cannot thank you enough for having done so. Um, Alright, well I wanted to do this live, but um, I fear it won't work. My Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy at the moment, to say the least, so here are my recorded ramblings for those of you who, for some reason, <laughs> are interested enough in learning a bit more about me, the man behind the voice. <laughs> okay, so um, that's a minute gone already, and I haven't even started to address the questions yet. Just wanted to say a big thank you to you all, really. Um, I love doing this. It's a huge amount of fun. It's very fulfilling. Um, helps me to, you know, deal with the creativity, the creative urges. It gives me an outlet for all that kind of thing. Never been much good at anything else. Can't play a musical instrument properly or anything like that. Can't draw very well, so... It's nice to be able to use the voice for something that you all like. <laughs> but as you can probably tell, I don't take it too seriously. Anyway, um, so a bit of a disaster, actually. I've um, copied-pasted gazillions of questions from you into a Word document, which I then managed to... Um, not delete, but somehow I don't have all of your questions in them. I've got about three pages of worth of a, in a Word document, so I'm going to get through those. And my sincere apologies to those of you who don't get a question answered this evening. And that's why I'm going to return next weekend and finish this off. So listen out for the questions. You may think, yay, that's the one I asked him. If I haven't gotten to you, and there's some very important people who comment a lot and are very supportive and are always there for every video whose questions I'm going to miss out this evening. Espe you know who you are, don't you? <laughs> you will by the end of this. And I desperately want a chance to make up for not answering your questions tonight. So the comments section for this are all yours. Please, 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 if you've written a question for me and I've not answered it, write it again. Okay, you really are going to get an idea of how goddamn disorganized and in a total mess my life is. <laughs> Please take the time to answer, ask those questions again and I will get around to answering them next week. All right. Shall we begin? I think we shall. Okay, so what have we got? All right. What inspired you to start a channel reading horror stories out loud? I think I answered that last time, but let's see if I've changed my mind since my last Q&A. Um, I heard other people doing it and thought, well, I like the idea of that. And you know what? I think I can do it a bit better than they can. Simple as that, really. Um, there's one or two of the big guys, the guys who've got like a million whatever subscribers, who inspired me to start, not because I particularly like their style, but because I thought I could do it better. God, I sound like a real ass, don't I? <laughs> That's the honest truth of it anyway. Okay. Do you like being read to or just reading for yourself? I love listening to other people read stories. Um, who are your favorite readers and channels? You know what? Um, I can't possibly name them here because I'll miss someone out and I might upset them. But as you can see, I kind of um, collaborate with a lot of other channels. And basically, that, that's a sign that I either am willing to give you a chance because you're just starting out or you're someone who I think is brilliant and you've given me the chance to work with you. So um, look on my channel page, look at all the collaborations I've done. They're people I like and people who are just starting out. That's it, that's how I'm gonna ask. I'm not gonna say who my favorites are because I will miss out one or two people and then I will feel guilty forever. And I don't want to do that. Okay, where are we? Do you enjoy writing as well or just reading? I love writing, but I simply haven't got the time to put any idea for a scary story down on paper. Um, I'm an academic in real life, <laughs> and um, I do a lot of research um, as part of my job and write it up. So I do write, but 
not in any form that you would enjoy reading. It's more sort of like, you know, uh, research, um, describing methodologies, my research, um, how I write questionnaires, what I find in terms of results, really boring stuff, uh, formulaic, but hey, I write and it's and that's how I do it. So sadly, not any scary stories of my own at the moment. Very happy that there are so many of you out there writing though, and giving us narrators the permission to read your stories. It's very fulfilling trying to put somebody else's um, idea across in a way that you think befits the work that they've put in. You know, people pour their heart and soul into writing these stories. Um, they're just starting out as writers, and we have a duty to take their material and put it across as best as we can. And I think that's an awesome responsibility for us to have. I take that very seriously. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a few people say, oh no, I don't like your style because you're overly dramatic or you, you're too slow, you take that. But I think you've got to let a story have the chance to breathe. You've got to give it a bit of room. You don't just motor through it line after line like um, some narrators do. It's like, give it a chance, you know? Let people ponder the words, draw meaning for themselves, because the very best stories have that, those elements of ambiguity in them. And you're thinking, well, what, you know, what happened there? What am I supposed to think? And that's why I kind of take my time and read a bit slower than other people read. It's like, well, you know what? Think about what I'm saying. Think about the words that are coming out of my mouth <laughs> and put your own meaning to them. Who do you think did this? What happened? Why did it happen? What were the uh, motives of the characters? Do you trust the main protagonist? And so on and so on. Hope you get what I mean. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Some technical questions coming up now. What's your setup like? What mic and software to record? Do you care? <laughs> Are you interested? Okay. I have um, a beautiful blue snowball microphone which was gifted to me by Unit 522. Um, I did some recording for him. Um, he liked my stuff, and he said, look, you know, you need a professional mic. So I'm based in Istanbul. He sent one across from America, which was awesome. And I can't thank him enough. So um, that's why I do quite a lot of um, collaborations with him. And um, I'm on his, I'm not on his payroll because he doesn't pay me, but <laughs> always happy to work with Unit 522. If you're not familiar with his channel, get over there. Um, he works with some really great up and coming authors, writers, and everything he does on his channel is extremely worthwhile and of high quality. All right, where are we? Hmm. What made you want to read Creepypastas? I think I've covered that already is that your on is that your real honest to god voice um yes <laughs> this is what i sound like in real life um can't help it it just kind of happened didn't always sound like this the benefit of getting a little bit older which brings me on to another question how old are you i'm not saying how rude <laughs> okay a bit older than some of you listening i dare say all right what's going on here Hmm. I saw your video for the Cats of Ulthor, and I am a huge H.P. Lovecraft fan. So, blah, 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 blah. are you going to do any more? Okay, what's this? Oh, there's a big paragraph about H.P. Lovecraft. Fantastic, like that. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what the question is there. I love H.P. Lovecraft, yes. Sadly, um, when I do the classic by Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, um, not many people watch the video. Um, it's a bit of a shame, really, but I will be doing more of the classics as the months go by because, hey, it's still worth it, isn't it? And, um, you know, I, I can deal with the occasional video not doing as well, despite the fantastic source material. Mm. What story by him would you like to see turned into a movie? Um, still can't. I've been thinking about that since that question was asked to me, and I can't think of an answer. H.P. Lovecraft... Um, they're all extremely f fantastical stories with incredible imagery. And um, personally, I don't think the, the world of cinema is ready yet, even with um, the CGI we have, to do a lot of his stuff justice. So, what would I like to see turned into a movie from his work? Nothing yet. Wait. 
we've waited long enough we can wait another 10 years until technology is ready <clears throat> who are some of your favorite authors do you have a personal favorite story that spooked you um favorite authors i'm going to take this from creepy pastor authors and again i'd like you to look on my um channel page i've started organizing it according to author because i noticed that there were three four or five whose stories i kept returning to and i've made um a little playlist of each of theirs um you'll find it pretty easy enough um so yeah and again i don't want to say too many about the creepy pastor authors because obviously i'll miss somebody out that i really like and then I'll get all upset about it and they'll get upset too. And, oh, it's just not worth it. There's too much bad feeling in the world. Um, there are some fantastic creepypasta writers out there. Check out my channel page. You'll find the playlists. And that playlist and the list, the list of playlists will continue to grow as I do more narrations. Favorite story that spooked you? Um, there's a much covered creepypasta called string theory i did this getting on for a year ago it's not the longest it's about 15 minutes but damn it's one of those uh, glitch in the matrix where everything you think about the world we live in may be just a little bit wrong it's one of those that really makes you think string theory um go and find it it's um i've rec i've narrated it Everybody Under the Sun has also narrated it, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find. But obviously my version is the best. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. Let me see. Oh, more questions coming up. Uh, All right. I'm, even if I got through, um, even if I wanted to do them all this week, I'm not going to get through them all. Because obviously you're busy people and you don't want to be wasting your whole life listening to me waffling about um, nonsense. Okay, I answered that one already. How long do you plan on narrating? Till you all get fed up of me, to be honest. <laughs> While you keep coming back uh, in ever-increasing numbers, I am happy to keep on doing this. Like I've said, it's fun. I enjoy it. And um, I like being able to do something that other people enjoy. So um, for as long as um, people keep listening. Sorry, there's a there's a huge somebody's written about twenty questions in one paragraph. Let me see. Have you ever been narrating and some weird, unexplainable things occur? Um, no, to be honest. Um, nothing strange has happened while I've been doing a recording session. Um, the cats come and jump on my legs and dig their claws into me, but you know that's just a cat being a cat, isn't it? So that's and it's perfectly explainable. Um, you know, I live in Istanbul, we have power cuts, so it can be a bit odd when you're in the middle of doing something and just everything goes off, and you're in, plunged into darkness and complete silence, apart from your own voice and the glow of the computer screen. Maybe there's something weird going on there, but no. Oh, I wish I had something more interesting to say for that. It's quite a good question. Um, hmm. Would you or have you considered collabing with other YouTubers on a story? Um, my collaborations uh, playlist is growing by the minute. Well, not by the minute, obviously, but it's growing. Probably at 60 videos there of um, other people I've worked with on stories. Some that are featured on their channels, some that are featured on mine. Get to my channel page and have a look. There's lots going on. Lots of other narrators for you to discover. Oh, this is a good question. How long does it typically take you to find a story worthy of enough of narrating? bloody ages <laughs> I don't know it's one of those strange things sometimes you just like you find something and you think damn this is good immediately other times you can sit and read for an hour and just think wow you know thank you genuinely thank you people for writing a story but you know keep writing keep developing your style keep um, working on uh, you know the nuances of writing <laughs> because you're not quite there yet and um, when you've read a dozen stories or so in a row like that, you start to think, oh, God, oh, maybe not today. But yeah, there's there's um, loads of good stuff out there. There really is. And like I said, um, I stick with um, my favorite writers quite often. So uh, you get a pretty good idea. And you seem to and all of you, the uh, wider community, have a good sense of who the good writers are, because when you post a story by somebody, that you know is a good writer, it gets a lot more views than uh, 
random people who aren't so known. How did you end up working and living in Turkey? I'm moving on to the next question now, by the way. In Turkey, how many languages do you speak? Je ne parle pas français un petit peu. Don't speak German. English, not bad at that. Turkish, you biliyorum. you believe in Turkey, it's going all right. I speak Turkish fairly well. Um, came here for a woman, and I stayed here for the same reason. Let me see. Oh, okay. Not going into that into too much detail, but yeah, been here for a while. Turkey, um, Istanbul, massive city, hectic, constantly, full of people everywhere. I don't know. Get up, go to work, come home, watch a bit of TV, have a can of beer. Um, pretty normal life. It's not as um, amazingly exotic as you might think, to be honest. Hmm. Would you consider reading poetry? Uh, yes, I would. I have done a couple of times. And again, um, the video ends up being two minutes long, and people are like, oh, I well, can't be bothered to watch that. Or they don't want to listen to a poem that takes 15 minutes to, uh, for me to read. I mean, it's a different style. It's quite hard to get to nail it, you know, to get it right, reading poetry. Um, because you have to put, you have to get each stanza to be on its, just sort of stand on its own, but also, you know, get this, get the story, the, you know, the continuing story to flow. And it's bloody difficult, to be honest. Like I said, um, I can't remember how many poems I've done, two, three, four, maybe. And it's exhausting because it's not just editing out, um, bits where I burp or, um, you know, I accidentally close the browser or something. You have to sort of edit the uh, the breaks between each line and put the pauses in and stuff. It's I enjoy it, but it's hard, hard work. Okay, so don't expect too much in the way of poetry on the channel for that reason. Oh, nice question here. Who were your favorite authors and books growing up? Same question for the present. Um, massive, massive Stephen King fan when I was younger. Um, fortunately, during the 90s, I managed to avoid reading the books he was writing during the 90s and went back to his, from the 70s to uh, the late 80s, his first golden era, Stephen King. Um, and then recently, I've got back into him, mainly thanks to the, um, the, the sequel to The Shining and his Kennedy assassination book. You know what? I've forgotten both the titles of those. So if you're a fan, you'll know the ones I mean. Um, now that he's in his sixties, he's sort of, um, having a bit of an Indian summer. He's, he's writing some good stuff again now, Stephen King, obvious answer, but Hey, it's true. Uh, oh, okay. Where am I from? Next question, England, but, um, those of you who follow the channel will know that I've kind of moved all over the place. Um, spent some time in Southeast Asia, uh, not living, but traveling around. Um, lived in the United States for a while, um, which was fun. Um, England, on and off, and Istanbul for quite a while now. So that's it. That's why I have this strange accent, which is very hard to place. Mm. All right, where are we? Hmm. Okay, some people have gone really sort of into this, so I've got to sort of wade through several sentences to find the actual question. What do you wear when recording? That's a hell of a question. And the answer is fairly boring, probably just jeans and a t-shirt, to be honest. Um, funnily enough, um, I do tend to burp quite a lot while recording. Sorry, this is not very sexy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I tend to, um, because, you know, you, you, the way you're speaking, you're trying to put sort of um, the right stress and intonation patterns into the sentence, and it can put quite a lot of um, stress on on how you breathe. Not stress exactly, but, you know, you can't, and it's sort of, I seem to tend to get sort of trapped air, and fortunately I edit out all this before you actually get to listen to um, what I say. So, but yeah, so one consequence is that I tend to loosen the belt buckle <laughs> on the jeans while narrating. Very odd, but hey, that's just how it is. All right. So yeah, nothing exciting. Jeans and a t-shirt. You have to be comfortable because you, you're sitting down for as much as an hour doing this. Anyone intending to do it? 
don't think that you're going to get a 15 minute story and you're going to just like rattle it off in 15 minutes and then press go to YouTube. It doesn't happen like that at all. Hmm. Oh, this is one. Okay, one about the music. Now, do you create all your music electronically, electronically, or do you play some instruments individually? Don't play any instruments, but I have um, pretty sophisticated software. It's actually what I started out doing before I started narrating. I started putting together um, creepy ambient uh, background music, which no one listened to at all. So I thought, well, I'll, you know what? I'll use it, and hopefully, I've managed to put it to good use. Mm, all right, so how are we doing? My God, you've been listening to me for nearly 20 minutes now already. Let me get a move on. All right, and like I said, I promise a part two next week. And I'm serious. If I haven't got to your question, uh, write it again, and I promise, promise, promise I will get onto it next week. All right, hope you're enjoying the uh, fan art, by the way. I cannot tell you how much I love it when people um, draw pictures of me. Um, don't know where you get your ideas from. Um, the whole sort of Benedict Cumberbatch thing, which is very flattering, by the way, has sort of taken off. It's um, got a life of its own now, and I really like the way it's gone. I like the way this sort of um, caricatured image has developed. I think it's just a lot of fun, and I love the fact that you do it. Um, you'll see some um, face art makeup as well so in these pictures. Awesome, brilliant. Uh, it really means a lot that um, my work means enough to you that you would spend time and effort doing that. Brilliant. Okay, these this is these are heartfelt thanks here. I'm not just saying it. Really, it just means a lot, you know. We as narrators, I know all of us, we put a hell of a lot of time and work into making these videos. So when we get any kind of positive feedback, but if we get constructive criticism it's cool. You know, I've changed my style a lot over the year and a bit I've been doing this. And I I do listen to what people say. Um but when people show um, positive appreciation, it really means a lot to us, okay? Some of the big channels aren't very good at um, feeding back. You know, I try to, I personally try to answer questions, respond to comments as much as I can. It has got to the point now where it's physically impossible to reply to everyone, and I apologize to that. I, I love all of the comments you leave on the videos, and I do be my best to get back to all of you. You know that but it has now reached the point where it's impossible. It's a good sign because that means the channel's getting big and um, lots of you are writing, but you know, it breaks my heart that I can't comment and reply to each and every one of you. But I do my best and I hope you realize that. Ooh, where are we? Ooh, okay. All right, back to the, where, my living situation. You mentioned having lived in numerous places. Do you have a favourite and why? What was the largest culture shock? Hmm. Interesting. Um, going to America was interesting because you think, oh, you know, I speak the language. Um, there are so many commonalities between the culture. We grow up watching so many American shows on television, heavily influenced by uh, North American culture. But there were some many, many little differences. I mean, when I moved to Istanbul, it's like, well, OK clean slate, I don't know what the hell's going on, I didn't speak the language, um, different religion, yada yada, so many different things going, but when you go to America you think, well okay, basically, it's going to be pretty much the same, and it's there are so many little differences, ways you have to tweak your behaviour, and certain things in the language which are completely alien to the North Americans, so you'd say something, or even the intonation, it's like, you know, if I ask a question, you, you know, in the United States, you kind of raise your voice at the end of the sentence, whereas in England, you don't do that. So um, I'd ask a question, and people would have no idea that I'd just asked them a question. And you'd be like, what? I'm like, yeah, I just asked you a question. And they're like, oh, really? Yeah, it's just because of the way you were saying it uh, was was completely um, unusual to them. So yeah, it's it took a while. That's why um, a lot of uh, English people, if they spend time in America, they end up with this weird um what we call the uh, the mid-atlantic accent whereas you know you're clearly english but you start speaking like an american and um it's more in the way that you intonate your sentences like this and you know and you kind of change your grammar a little bit 
and then you sound completely weird, both to Americans and to English people. <laughs> but I understand why it happens, because it happened to me. Okay, where are we? So yeah, um, going to America is a, quite a culture shock. Oh, this question's nasty. And I don't know if I'm going to answer it. What are some pet peeves you find in other narrators that you try to avoid repeating? Now, um, especially when I do collaborations on other channels, not everyone appreciates my style. And you know, that's totally fine. I have a style of doing this. And like I've said, it's deliberately somewhat slow paced. And you know, I've just, I've explained my reasons why that is. And some people just think, oh my God, I'm just like, you know, just like the, the child of William Shatner <laughs> with my crazy sort of pauses throughout the sentence to try and make it dramatic. And, um, you know, you guys, you guys have got used to it and, um, you can deal with it, but some people find it really nasty. Um, but the one thing that really annoys me is completely flat reading. And some of the big, big narrators with like a million plus subscribers bug the hell out of me. It's just like, I am reading a line of text. Now I am reading another line of text. Now this is another line of text. This is my scary voice. This is the part where you will be scared. And I'm like, oh my God, come on, you know, put some feeling into it. So that's what really bugs me. There are um, a few people like that. And hey, good luck to them. They've had incredible success and people obviously don't have the same problem that I do with the way they do it. But yeah, people who aren't trying. I'll be blunt. Okay, some people for whom this has become their job and you can hear that they don't particularly enjoy doing it anymore. But they've got success and they're making a good, decent living out of it. So they have to keep going. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm not being specific about that, but um, one or two of the big guys upset me because it's just like, come on, look, you know, think of the people who are spending, you know, giving up their time to listen to you and your narrations, your stories, and you're not trying. I know you're not trying and you know you're not trying. Okay, time to keep spreading the love here. There's enough nastiness in the world. and I'm not a nasty person, so <laughs> let's move on. Where are we? What inspired my username? Don't know, no idea. Um, it was a there was there was a load of people who had like creepy pasta in their name, so I thought um, I'll be quite cool and sort of um, European, Doctor Creep and Van Pasta. I just thought it sounded cool, but it was a bit too long. And there was this, then I found that there was already a Doctor Creepy Pasta. I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm just like not copying you. Or I don't want to have the same thing going on that you do, so. Yeah, it just shortened to Dr. Creepin, which seems all right. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get carried away with all these, um, you know, people saying, yeah, the doctor's in the house. The doctor's going to make a house call. Time to, for a checkup and all this kind of stuff. It makes me laugh, but, you know, I'm not a real doctor. <laughs> okay, like this question. I'll tell you what, um, this is going to be the last question for today. I'll say one more time. If I haven't got to your question... Do me a favor and write it again. I've still got another page worth in my Word document, but I have lost some of them. And I, uh, I'm feeling awful about it. Anyway, really got to stop waffling like this. Where are we? Okay. How do you go about prepping to narrate a relatively long creepypasta? Have you guys ever tried this? It's really tough, you know. You sit down, sitting in one place, trying not to make your chair squeak or you know try not to shuffle around I'm not very good at it and I have to edit out little sounds of me doing this shuffling the chair or <coughs> you know breathing in through those and stuff like that there's a million and one little sounds which just are just explode when they go through the microphone so um, prepping strangely enough don't drink before because then you get on your tongue so I have to not drink for a while before. Uh, read about a half a page worth of text and then record it because otherwise my brain doesn't take it seriously. So record about half a page of text, then stop and delete it because it will be horrible. Uh, you have to get into a rhythm where you kind of read a sentence and then you're halfway through the next sentence 
while you're reading, when you're actually speaking this. So I'm sort of half a sentence of a he ahead of myself. And um, it helps when people have written really well and the grammar's good because if that's when you sort of have to stop and cock it up because you start, you, you get into the zone where, you know, I'm reading six, eight, ten words ahead of what I'm actually saying. And um, it's beautiful when you get into that zone because then you just like bang, bang, bang. You can just uh, knock off a story really quickly. But it doesn't just happen. It doesn't matter how many times I've done this. You have to take that first page. You have to sort of speak and speak for five minutes. And it, blah, 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 everything will come out bad. Like this. And you keep tripping over your tongue. But then it kind of hopefully settles. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can, I can sit here. Every single sentence will come out nasty and I'll have to read it again. But hey, it's all worth it in the end. At least I hope it is. All right. You know what? I've taken up half an hour of your time this evening. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me and finding out a little bit more about what I do and the process and who I am. I'm still kind of a private person, um, quite introverted, quite reclusive, but, you know, I like having this outlet into you know the creative world and i'm really really glad that you all take the time to spend with me listening to these stories and as long as you keep listening i'll keep making them all right i've only touched on a handful of the questions that you guys wrote down so you know what write them again if i haven't answered your question and i know i've said this like five times now I haven't answered all your questions. Go on, do me that little favor and write them again in the comments. I will return next week. <laughs> Actually, I'll be back tomorrow night. I've got a story lined up. I'm thinking of putting together some uh, creepy dentist stories. Because, hey, you know what? We all hate the dentists. So um, it's about time I touched on that theme. Don't you think? Okay, my lovelies. Thank you ever so much. Be back soon. I'm still here. Are you still here? Okay, go on. Go and get on with something else. All right? All right. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.